Welcome back to Crystal Clear! I'm Ostrich Vox, and with all the talks and speculation of Corrupted Steven, something that I feel like isn't really a focus is how Steven could even be healed. Part of what makes the concept of Corrupted Steven so interesting is that Steven is one of the four components needed to cure corruption in the first place. So, if our beloved protagonist turned into a giant wormy boy, or as I really believe it's a dragon, how could he revert back to his original state? And now that we've explored a possible aspect for Steven becoming corrupted by few Using with Jasper, it really got me thinking. We know there are two ways to achieve corruption. Once by the initial diamond blast, and two fusing with a gem who experienced corruption. The formerly corrupted gems are now uncorrupted, but they still have some scars. A piece of that corruption remains. And I believe that has to deal with the other way to cure corruption, because if there's two ways to get corrupted, couldn't there be two ways to heal it? And would the second aspect be necessary to get rid of any and all scars? Let's talk about it. Of course, spoiler warning, if you do not want to know any potential plot points in Stevie Universe Future, please click off now. With all that said, let's dive in. Now I have addressed bits and pieces of this idea in other videos, but an alternate route to healing corruption has actually been teased in the original Stevie Universe. Corruption was described in the episode Monster Reunion as a tear to the mind, and going off Steven's own understanding of corruption in Gem Hunt, he deduced that despite a gem being corrupted, their true personality, thoughts, and emotions emotions still persist within. They just have to be appeased to. And of course, Steven also mistook the diamond attack as a song. Now all these factors didn't really come into play when the diamonds healed the gems. It was as simple as the diamonds and Steven gathering Finrose's fountain, unloading all the bubble gems, and letting their abilities work their magic from there. However, since these hill gems still have remnants of corruption left over, I want to jump to Steven's interaction with Jasper in Little Homeschool, telling Jasper that half of the uncorrupted gems fought by her side, and that they're still a little messed up. Up, but they're getting the help they need. And I believe it's the idea of these gems still being a little messed up that communicates why they so display details of corruption. There is no true medication you can take to heal corruption. And I imagine if there was some post fountain process, Steven would continue to aid these gems with treatments of the diamond's extractions that he keeps in his bathroom. But who knows, maybe that is something that occurs off screen. Still, in order to truly heal corruption, Steven would have to resolve his issues on the inside, not the outside. So, should his corruption actually come to pass, I could easily see the diamonds pulling what they did in Lecture Riddle Homeworld with White in place of Steven, and of course, failing to restore him to his original physical form. This would mean that the ticket to healing Steven could lie within a location we've barely explored in the series, but holds great significance. The Office of Greg's Counselor. Oh, no, I mean, the Mindscape. I've pointed this out in a previous Crystal Clear, but the villain section of Future's opening has a backdrop that looks very similar to the Mindscape, only with a shift in hue, which could be an allusion to where the climax of the series can take place. If Steven sports the ability to traverse inside this realm, I have no reason to believe that the likes of White Diamond, who has mind control powers, lacks the same capability. Thus, I believe a step in potentially healing corruption is being able to communicate with the corrupted inside their own head, thus projecting one's consciousness, or who knows, multiple minds at once, into the affected. I imagine being actually inside the mind of a corrupted gem would be full of all sorts of disturbing imagery and enemies, negative perceptions of hardships in the people in one's life, taking a dangerous form that actually has the capability to harm others. Essentially, one's mind has to be expelled of the toxicity. Afterwards, I believe the key will actually be music, a song. It's the most Steven Universe thing they could do. In order to heal corruption, you have to get into someone's head and serenade them with a melody that lets them know everything will be okay. That the negative perceptions of life, themselves, and those around them are false. More or less, music is the therapy. You have to work through your issues, but things can also get a little bit musical. And if I had to make one big prediction if Corrupted Steven came true, it would be that his defeat is ultimately with Steven learning to not only love himself, but be willing to accept help from the people around him, rather than being the one who helps everyone instead. And should this be the case, we would be in for a beautiful resolution. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? Can corruption be healed through the mind? Why or why not? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RyanTubbleVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Fox. We're also on Instagram. Special thanks to Art with Coda for creating an awesome thumbnail. For more of his wonderful art, you can find him on Tumblr and Instagram at Art with Coda and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Link down below in the description. 
Help the Rajput grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. All Shrek Vox, signing out.